If you are a do-it-yourself raw feeder, you have probably wondered over the years, am I doing it right? Is my dog getting all the nutrients she needs? Today we're going to show you just exactly how to get the answers to those questions. So stay tuned. Parsley Pet is the most comprehensive nutrient testing for our pets on the market. Today we're going to show you exactly the whole entire process of the blueprint test from start to finish. We're going to send in a hair sample from Milka and they're going to be able to tell us exactly which nutrients she's lacking or over exceeding in and if she has any alarming amounts of heavy metals in her system. Once we get the report back, we'll have a call with Dr. Laurie Kozier who will give us feedback on how we can better tailor Milka's diet to her specific needs. One thing that we came upon was a test that tests 48 different nutrients at an intracellular level. So when you look at blood, blood tests is a transport mechanism and that's extracellular. But we weren't able to see how the food and everything the dog was eating was actually working inside the system because the body's gonna stay in a state of health, homeostasis. So being in that state of health, I may see calcium level, levels are fine in the blood, but when we test it intracellularly, we're actually seeing calcium being stripped from the bone and we're seeing it being in actually stripped from the muscle. And so that's indicative to a larger problem. We think this test is so cool because there's so much confusion on the term complete and balanced. This test really reminded us of one thing, which is we do feed Milka a complete and balanced diet, but Oftentimes we forget that our dog is an individual, so meeting AFCO or NRC requirements isn't necessarily enough for our dog. And that's actually what we found out with this test. This test gave us a clear view on which nutrients our dog actually needs more of because apparently she doesn't utilize them enough. So by doing this test, we got some really great insight on Milka's health and everything that we can do better with her diet. What we started to see is that 50% of dogs over the age of 10 will die of cancer. We were not okay with that. And so when we look at this nutritionally, human, pet, everything around us is affected by environmental toxins and it's affected by what we eat every day. If you wanna know what our results were with this test, make sure you stick to the end of that video because we're gonna show you the actual results and the Skype call with the vet, Dr. Laurie Kozier. For anybody interested, we actually have a discount code for you guys. You get 10% off with the code rawstruck 10 and the link is also in the description box. All right, so the first step is obviously to read the instructions that came with the email. There is no actual test kit. We're just taking Milka's hair sample and sending it off. We wanted this test to be non-invasive, to actually be able to simple hair sample very stable sample, and then we can test it 10 parts per million on how it's actually affecting inside the dog's system. And because of it, we can actually point to what is the proper nutrition for your dog. Milk, are you ready? Milk, are you ready? So first we actually need to brush Milka to make sure there's no leftover debris in her hair. Any hair that was brushed out cannot be used for the hair sample. Don't use an electric shaver because small parts of the metals may actually get mixed into the fur. We need to get about 125 milligrams of Milka's hair. So that's about one full tablespoon. So when we cut the hair, we're actually gonna cut it from several different spots above the shoulders and behind the head of the dog. We need to cut the hair as close to the skin as possible because that's where it reflects the most recent metabolic activity. So now we're going to weigh this up and that is 200 milligrams. It's a little bit over, but that's okay. We're supposed to put this in a mini envelope. However, we don't have a mini envelope. So what we're going to do is just wrap it up in this index card and then we're gonna send it off to them in a bigger envelope. The uh, lab form I have here, I already pre-filled this out. You will have to enter as specifically as possible what you're feeding your dog. So my question was, do I have to say that she eats beef liver and lamb liver, but no chicken liver? Because I'm gonna have to list like 100 ingredients or something like that. 
but um, their answer was knowing where the protein sources are coming from like I feed liver and I feed beef and lamb for example that is helpful for the vet who's going to actually look at the results in the end but it is not necessary so what is highly important for them to know is how much percent are we feeding in our case we're feeding around 10 percent liver that's what they actually really want to know so what we're going to do is actually send parsley pet the ingredient list of the most common items that milka eats on a daily or weekly basis so now we're finally done and we're ready to send this off let's go So it took about three weeks to get the results from Parsley Pet, and when we finally got them, we spoke to Dr. Laurie Kozier and Matt Rowe to get more information on the results that we received. As you can see, Milka's values are mostly in the yellow and green zones, but the values that were pointed out to us were specifically the low iron over here and the low zinc, and because these nutrients all have interrelationships, with each other we were also asked to take a closer look at the phosphorus calcium magnesium and vitamin d intake of milka and milka is doing wonderful in <laughs> yeah. all of it but you know there's a couple of those like having a low iron in there or a yeah. low zinc yeah, yeah that's a flat i yeah. mean that's that's yeah. pointing to something that could happen in the future yeah. ratios you know the ratios between these minerals is very important because it right. can Different minerals in excess or deficiency can affect the utilization and absorption of others. Yeah. Such as copper and zinc. Yeah. Excess zinc will bind copper mm -hmm. and cause a copper deficiency, mm -hmm. even though intake is adequate. When we look at the heavy metals, you can see that Milka has no concerning amounts of toxic elements in her body, which means we're doing a really good job on protecting her from environmental toxins. It's like Dr. Kozier told one of our clients um, to um, the Dawn dish soap in the bowl has the highest level of borax yeah. in the industry. And so the dog's licking the bowl one, yeah. two, three times a day. We don't lick our plates, so we don't see it. But with once they remove the soap, yeah. his issues got yeah. better. In the section of additional elements, the only thing that was pointed out to us was the high strontium level, which Dr. Kozier suggested means that we are feeding milk too much fish. The strontium level was quite high. Yeah. And yeah. you yeah. saw that, but it wasn't commented on. Yeah. Because really, strontium, we don't know how much of a role it actually plays, but yeah. one of the key sources of it is seafood. Yeah, so to me, kind of, kind of a flag that maybe your fish intake is too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, maybe dropping that to three times a week. Yeah. I might also drop your bone intake a little bit uh, yeah. because your calcium levels were high. Yeah. And you know, most people will say between ten and fifteen percent bone, and it all depends on the efficiency of the dog digesting that. So maybe drop it a percent or two. Yeah. Yeah, we do use around 12 percent, so maybe we'll just drop it to 10. The significant ratios of important nutrients are well balanced and in the green area. The toxic ratios are also at optimum levels. The nutritional blueprint test also gives us insight on the performance and endocrine system of Milka. This shows that the thyroid glands are dominant over the adrenal glands, which means Milka is better in endurance rather than speed, which is actually kind of true. The endocrine result suggests that Milka is in overall good health. Kind of nice about this test is it's a it's like a wizard. It almost tells you, okay, you may not see this now in the blood, yeah. but if you don't pay attention to it, you could creep up a year from now or mm -hmm. six months. From now. Yeah. Important to remember that nutritional deficiency is not a disease that happens quickly. Yeah. It takes a long time. Blood testing is important. That's mm -hmm. you know what's happening at that moment. Hair tissue mineral analysis looks at about a six month window. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a little different take yeah. on the information. Mm -hmm. And every dog's an individual. Yeah. And you've got to feed them as one. Mm -hmm. 
Towards the end of the report, we get a bit of information suggesting Milka is a slow metabolizer and we get a bit of a recap with all the nutrients that we have to take a closer look at. They tell us exactly why this matters and what to do with this information. You look at the endocrine system and then really what's happening, are they a slow metabolizer? Are they a fast metabolizer? Is what the dog was eating in the past created an imbalance in the system and it's not that that dog, there's a perfect diet for that dog, but there's a perfect diet in that moment of, let's say a dog is deficient in iron, or let's say a dog has high levels of mercury or aluminum because of its environment and where it lives, then there's a specific diet for that dog that can actually get them back to a healthy level and stop conditions like itching, hair loss, unexplained weight gain, that all of those little things that pop up that they treat today with pharmaceuticals, but pharmaceuticals just perpetuates the problem even further. So when we first got this test, we actually weren't really sure if this was good or not mm -hmm. because it said okay and there was a couple of, you know, red zones. So when we had the Skype call with Dr. Koja and Matt, it gave us a lot of closure. It's a very good result. You would be amazed. We have dogs that um, are using a commercial raw and they don't realize that it doesn't have a bone mix in it. Their phosphorus is sky high, their calcium is low, yeah. their iron is low. Yeah. Your results are really quite good. Okay. And, you know, I loved your diet plan with the amount of variety in your proteins and the inclusion of organ meat and vegetables and whole food sources of nutrients. Yeah. I see major derangements in some where we can't even detect some of the minerals and those dogs are really headed for trouble. So you're way above the curve. All right, so in a nutshell, this test really helped us figure out which nutrients Milka doesn't really utilize efficiently or where she needs a little bit more help and it really gave us a lot of closure. It gave us the closure that we're on the right path we're giving her a great variety, we're giving her a great diet, and she has no health issues that are creeping up, no apparent health issues, and it really made us feel more confident, right? Yeah. So we actually did make some changes, and we're gonna tell you exactly which changes we made, but keep in mind, these changes are specific to our dog. And yeah. Yeah, every dog is different. Yeah. And what we did was add more organ meat to Milka's diet. Why? Because organ meat is actually the multivitamin of the raw food diet. We also added more oysters for added zinc and added iron. We also added more sources of vitamin C to Milka's diet so it can increase the iron absorption within the body. When we actually looked back at her recipes, we saw that Milka gets usually double the amount of suggested iron. A requirement uh, of a healthy adult dog. So we kind of looked at ways to increase her iron absorption, which for us means adding vitamin C, adding oysters and soaking nuts and seeds. If we don't, then the seeds will contain a, an anti-nutrient called phytate and that also messes with the iron absorption. We also took a step back on fish. Milka used to get fish almost every single day. Now Milka gets fish about three, three to four times a week. Three to four times yeah. a week now. We also lowered the amount of bone that Milka consumes. So now instead of feeding her 12%, she eats about 10%. And by decreasing the amount of calcium that Milka consumes, we will also be increasing the amount of iron that she absorbs within her body. So Matt actually recommended that we retest Milka in about six to eight months just to make sure that the changes that we've made to Milka's diet shows improvement in her nutrient and heavy metal levels. Testing again in six months will allow you to say, are we doing it right? Or yeah. was at the right level that we need to adjust? Because it does take time to actually start interacting with the nutrients you're looking at and yeah. balance between all multiple minerals. And so really giving it that time to truly allow the nutrition to do its work.
If you want us to make a follow-up video, just leave a comment in the comment section. And if we get at least 50 people saying they want a follow-up video to see how the changes that we've actually made have impacted her levels, uh, yeah, just let us know and we'll do it. We'll get the test done and we will take you with us on this journey. Please do not forget that raw feeding is easy. If you're feeding the right recipes, if you're feeding a pre-made raw or you are keeping a very close eye on your dog's health, you already are doing better than most pet parents out there. This test is really for people that really want to dig deeper into what they're feeding their pets and how they, their pets are absorbing the nutrients within their bodies to maybe get some insight if there's anything that they may need to be concerned about with their dog's health. For anybody interested, we have a discount code for you guys. You get 10% off with the code rawstruck 10 and the link is also in the description box. All right, everybody, I hope you really enjoyed this video. And if you did, leave us a comment down below so we can make more videos like this. Bye. Bye.